Hi guys, Rap Critic here, and this was a request by Mahan. And if you'd like to join my Discord, see episodes earlier, make requests for reviews, check out my Patreon where you can help keep the show going plus see what I'm up to in between episodes. Or if you just want to do a one-time donation, check out my Ko-fi page where you can request song reviews as well as film reviews for my movie podcast. Or if you only have so much and just want to give a little, there's also my PayPal. So let's talk about Del the Funky Homo Sapien. Psychic among them possess you with one go. For those that may not know, he was the rapping blue ghost from the infamous early Gorillaz music videos, which is how I first got into him as a kid. In fact, I remember thinking since he was on two singles from the album, I thought he was an official member of the band. But nah, his origins actually go way back to the early 90s Bay Area scene. Straying away from the more hardcore acts like MC8 and his own actual cousin Ice Cube, Dell's sound was more fun and playful, uh, opting to expand on the P-Funk sounds guys like Digital Underground and De La Soul were going for, uh, but with a penchant for flowing lyrical lines, bouncy cadences, and imaginative subject matter, culminating in what I feel is his best offering, Deltron 3030, an incredible space opera rap album about Dell and his team saving hip-hop in the future. It's a hail classic that earned him respect from all corners of the underground rap scene. He also made a song about smelly people who don't shower enough. I had to ask the dope to pass the soap, cause this cone had to slip the crustaceans, or bathrooms in the bus station. However, despite the silly subject matter, he actually makes it work, still maintaining his signature multisyllabic cadence and fun lyrics. Seriously, this guy's unfathomably talented, and in a just world, he'd be mentioned just as often as an Eminem or a Jay-Z. So many rappers make a career on bragging about their cleverness, but Dell's extensive songwriting abilities prove it beyond a doubt. However, his highest charting single is Mr. Dabalina, which, despite never charting on Billboard's Top 100, always catches me off guard with just how many people fondly remember it. And while nothing on his 1991 album Wish My Brother Was Here matches the maturity and creativity of later albums like 3030, it is cool to see an artist's more conventional sounding older material that has the seed of that unique flair they were still developing. Like with this song, it's a topic most rappers make songs about. Other people ripping you off because of just how damn cool you are! And sure, it's couched in a comfortable Parliament and James Brown sample, as is pretty much expected of a guy from his time and area. <laughs> But he also creates this character named Bob Dabalina who personifies that kind of style jacker. Uh, the name taken from this avant-garde song by the monkeys of all bands. Zilch, Mr. Dabalina, Mr. Bob Dabalina, Mr. Dabalina, Mr. Bob Dabalina. Zilch, China Clipper calling Alameda. China Clipper calling Alameda. Zilch. Apparently, the original song, Zilch, is just the band repeating a bunch of random phrases they heard while touring. And at one point when they were at an airport, uh, they overheard someone on an intercom paging a guy named Bob Dabalina. And through the wonder of music magic, who'd have guessed that some random guy's name overheard in an airport would be used 23 years later as an insult for corny copycats? Seems kinda unfair. I mean, who knows? Maybe Bob Dabalina was a cool guy. Usually people have to earn having their name turned into an insult uh, by doing something bad or embarrassing that gets referenced by people using your name whenever they do something similar to what you did. All this guy did was have a semi-interesting name. Now, to be fair, it does kind of sound like a generic name for a milk toast guy, especially with how flatly it's being said in the song. In fact, I always thought it was supposed to be a stand-in for some corporate middleman who doesn't really respect hip-hop culture, but just wants to leech off of its money-making potential. But when I listen to the verses, it sounds like something else. The style of apparel you adopted you used to make fun of, but now you want to rock it because I know I'm not paranoid. When I say I saw you trying to mock me, now you and your crew are on a mission trying to hawk me. That doesn't sound like a corporate stooge looking for a payday. It sounds more like some upper class suburban high school kids who listened to too many songs by Dell's cousin and wanted to be down too. The little two timer resembles Aunt Jemima with jeans and a dirty white hood. Although, with the amount of times he keeps using the word fraudulent, it kind of makes me wish someone had given the guy a thesaurus. You really make me sick with your fraudulent behavior. Friends could be fraudulent, your fraudulent foes. Fraudulent foe with the strength of Hercules. Was, was he trying to make fraudulent foes a thing? Well, it doesn't exactly roll off the tongue. Also, I thought it was just a general term for copycats pretending to be black, but then he adds a weirdly personal detail to it. First he was my money grip, then he stole my honey dip. Mr. Dabalina is a serpent. So, he's referring to a real friend of his who took care of his finances, but then apparently d stole his girlfriend? Damn, this guy really is trying to jack everything from you. And then there's an Adams Family reference for some reason. So I would suggest that you try to impress some Professor Dabalina. Like, what? Was that a phrase back then? 
Did people say, go impress Uncle Fester when they wanted to dismiss you in the early 90s? Now, I've seen it said on Genius that it's supposed to be a reference to another one of his songs where he's rapping about sellouts. Go take your place beside Uncle Fester, because you are an uncle too, you are an uncle Tom. But that feels like a bit of a stretch. I think he probably saw an ad for that Adams Family movie that came out that year and it was just on his mind. The style of dress is not the key, Zabalina. He then ends by saying hip-hop culture isn't just the aesthetic. It's about the heart and soul of the creators and what they're trying to say in their message. It's all in the mind and the heart, so you should start by remembering you gotta pay a fee, Zabalina. But if you're gonna rip off our shit, you know, at least pay us for it. Overall, I give this a 4 out of 5. It's definitely a little dated sound-wise, and some of the writing choices are kind of silly, but there's still a lot of charm and personality to help it stand out on its own. However, speaking as a fan, I have to say though, I much more enjoy the material he put out after this, lyrically as well as musically. Well, that's the episode. Leave a like if you liked because it helps, comment if you have something to say because it helps even more, and hit the subscribe button and the bell because it helps the most. Oh, and if you want to get my merch, follow me on social media, listen to my podcast, or support the show, uh, you can get all those links in the link tree below. So check all that fun stuff out, and I'll catch you next time. Peace.